We've been talking about it for weeks now. Devastating wildfires in Canada, creating hazy skies here in Minnesota and Wisconsin. We've had those rolling air quality alerts issued all summer. Our skylines thick with pollution have been slow to clear as well. So we decided, you know what, this issue needs some more legwork. That's why WCCO investigative reporter Jonah Kaplan and one of our photographers headed north to Canada and is bringing us a special series called Summer of Smoke. Jonah was able to swing by and chat with us today before his first report airs on the 10 o'clock news tonight. Jonah, the situation in Canada is really, really serious. I, it's tough to put into words, but here's the analogy. What if there were a scenario where there were wildfires in all 50 U.S. states going on at the same time? That's what's going on in Canada. Every single province, every single territory affected by this. When we got up there last week, 4,700 fires, there's now been more than 5,000. So an additional 300 in just a few days. And it's burned a combined area, guys, 29 million acres. That's more than two thirds the size of Minnesota, hmm. about the size of the state of Iowa. How do you put out a fire like that? How do you put out 5,000 fires? It's just, it's an impossible task. I'm glad we made the trip. Where exactly did you go? Take us along on your on your road trip. There. Right. So obviously Canada is a giant country. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually went right up north, uh, almost due north, to uh, Manitoba, to Winnipeg. Okay. And the reason we chose Winnipeg is because that is the headquarters for what's called CIFC, the Canada Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Center. When we talked with Canadian officials, we actually talked with the U.S. the Canadian Embassy in Washington. Everything's being done on the provincial level. They don't really have a FEMA. They don't have a kind of federal firefighting force. So they do have, though, this one entity called CIFC, uh, which kind of coordinates all the resources and all the international resources coming in. So not just what Canada has, but there are 12 countries lending hands. America, 2,100 firefighters wow. since May. That's the largest U.S. delegation ever for an international firefight. This is the largest global mobilization for a wildfire crisis like this. So to go there, to be inside, this is what we're going to see tonight, seeing all these countries work together, seeing how they monitor all this, uh, it, it really is, is um, something to see and appreciate because, look, this is not just something that affects Canada. We know it affects us, North America, and ultimately, from a climate change standpoint, it affects the whole world. Yeah, it's a symptom of a bigger problem. You would said the word prevention as though they can't really stop the problem. Let's maybe make sure we don't allow more fires to start. How does uh, a country do that? You kind of have to take priorities. And that's something else we're going to look at tonight is, well, how do you strategize? What are the priorities? And it starts with people. It starts with property because Canada is home to almost 10% of the world's forests. I mean, think about that from a fuel standpoint, how much there is to burn. You go to California, if you visit Los Angeles, you know, you go in the valley, you see you pass by some of those forests. Well, you've got kind of a natural line there, mm -hmm. urban versus the forest. In Canada, it's just these mm -hmm. endless troves of, of forests. So you have to decide kind of where to prioritize, and that's what they do. How can they protect people? How can they protect property? How can they protect infrastructure? And how can they use the weather and Mike, you could talk to this. How can they use the weather conditions as an asset rather than a liability? Right. We, I mean, so are they changing their plan today in general or the way they're thinking about this compared to the way they did it 10 or 20 years ago? Is what's happening in the world affecting how they're planning? One of the other stories that we're going to be working on in this series is smoke meteorology and how they're actually looking at the clouds, looking at the weather patterns, and trying to see how it moves, where it moves, and because it's not just smoke going, you know, in direction east-west, it's going up or down. Mm -hmm. Does the smoke go into the upper levels of the atmosphere? Does it go into the lower levels of the atmosphere? Does it go to the ground level, which affects their breathing? Uh, we're going to be looking at this. We're going to be looking at new discoveries and revelations about the health risks related to smoke. Again, we're going to introduce you to, as well, our Minnesota firefighters, the U.S. firefighters helping, and finally, Again, how all this weaves together, it's climate change. And what does this mean for the future? I think certainly this has been one of the stories of the summer, if not the story of the summer, when we look at all the air quality alerts that have racked up. And that's certainly what pushed us to go take the trip. It was a sobering ship, worthwhile one. Mm -hmm. And I hope, uh, I hope you'll join us.